What's up guys, Econ John here. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Ramsey Cass, Koopman's models, and the diagrams that we showed in the last video. And we're going to show how government spending goes and affects those models and talk about some other shocks. So the topics we're going to cover in this video are one, how government enters the RCK model when employing lump sum taxes. Two, how an unexpected permanent increase in government spending impacts equilibrium in the RCK model. Three, how an expected temporary increase in government spending impacts equilibrium in the RCK model. And four, is we're going to talk about shocking the model via changes in the representative consumer's utility functions subjective discount factor rho. Recall that the budget constraint without government per effective labor is written as the following. The government finances its spending, in this case, via a lump sum tax in per effective wages. So we can simply put government spending in this model as the following, right, where we just put G, right, where our wages per effective labor is, and we just subtract that from there. It should be noted that since government is employing lump sum taxes, our consumer's Euler equation does not change. The inclusion of government spending enters the our capital accumulation equation and making the shifts in our graph more obvious. This being k dot is equal to f prime of kt, which is our marginal product of capital, minus our consumption per effective labor, minus our government spending per effective labor, minus n plus g times our capital per effective labor. It is clear that g of t is, will be the source of our shift in our diagram. So let's talk about the effect of an unexpected increase in government spending. It's pretty simple. When graphing an unexpected increase or more accurately show the introduction of government spending, we shift the K dot curve down, which is the green line, and in turn show that it shifts down to a new saddle path over here. It's just a vertical shift down. That's it. Now, if consumers expect a temporary increase in government spending, the way they consume is rather interesting. Say that in the initial period, T0, the government announces it will be imposing a lump sum tax in the next period, T1, and they will not impose the tax in T2. The way consumers act is that they cut back on consumption and invest more in capital to save for period T1, but don't reach a new saddle path. Instead, after waiting through the tax period, they return to the original saddle path directed towards the initial BGP. This produces a clockwise circle of consumption around the original BGP point until reaching the new saddle path where it returns. So the shock that we're going to be talking about now is going to be a little bit more theoretical since we're going to be dealing with changes in our representative consumer subjective discount rate. One could say that this is due to a result of a aggregate self-discovery process of new preferences, though. If we see a fall in our discount rate, we'll see a rightward shift of our C dot line. The way our representative consumer re approaches the new BGP is by immediate reduction in consumption from point A to point B, and in turn increases consumption and capital until point C. Though we have not listed this on our slide or showed it on a graph, if there is an increase in row, we would observe a leftward shift. So. Those are the shocks in the RCK model and their graphs. Um, let me know what you thought. Tell me if you liked this series. Ask, tell me if there's anything else you want me to explain. And, you know, like and subscribe. See ya.